Of late, there's been a lot of interest in this investment vehicle called the Alternate Investment Fund. Today, we're going to look at what is an alternate investment fund and what are the features and who does it apply to. Like mutual funds, alternate investment fund is a class of investments by itself. It's governed under the SEBI's Alternate Investment Fund Regulation 2012. So it is a regulated asset class. So one can get into this asset class with the idea of getting a reasonably regulated return, so to say. That said, if you look at the performance of alternate investment fund as a category is now worth about 8 lakh plus crores as of 31st of March 2023, which means it's not a very small asset class anymore. There is substantial amount of investments coming in from high net worth individuals and institutions that make this a reasonably attractive investment venue. SEBI, as per its classification of alternate investment funds, short form called AIF, has three categories. Category one comprises of the following categories of funds. The first one in CAT one is venture capital funds. These are funds that pool money from investors and invest into private ventures which are up and coming. These are high risk vehicle with usually an unproven business model as yet. Therefore, the risk is very high as is the return. The fund manager's role is to evaluate risk and return and provide investors with a great option for investing. Now, out of maybe 10 investments that one does in a venture capital fund, usually six or seven of them go dud. But the remaining three or four become superstars that provide the return of principal and the attractive returns that one sees. So venture capital funds are the first item on Cat 1's radar. The second fund is what is called an angel fund. The angel fund is actually the first funding point for any new startup. Any new startup promoter or an entrepreneur who is looking to raise funds usually reaches out to these angel investment firms and therefore is looking at raising his capital to see whether his idea is worth turning commercial. So in fact, it's a higher risk than even venture capital funds, but the returns are also can be stupendous. So this angel funds are the second category of funds. The third category is what is called an infrastructure funds. These are funds which pool investors money and invest into infrastructure projects, both equity and debt, so that over long periods of time, investors can reap the benefit of this. The usual investors in these are normally big institutional players because they have the ability to hold period for investments for a much longer period. Infra funds are typically for longer periods of 10 to 15 years in nature. And the last fund in CAT1 is what is called a social venture. Now social ventures are ventures from the heart. So they are doing something to benefit a certain segment of society, doing good to society and so on and so forth. So while their returns are not supreme, people invest because they see it contributing to a certain cause. So that is the fourth category of funds that CAT1 does. Now, except for angel investing, all other investments will be a minimum ticket size of one crore. So it's not for the regular mass investor, it is for high net worth individuals only. Now, except in the case of angel investing, if the person is a director or an employee or an associate, of that angel fund, then their ticket size can be 25 lakhs. Other than that, for everybody else, the ticket size is 1 crore. What is CAT2? CAT2 has two classification of funds. First is what we call the private equity funds. Private equity funds typically raise money from investors to invest in unlisted companies, companies that are yet to kind of hit the secondary market or primary market for listing purposes. These are companies with high potential, good established track record, but 
are not yet publicly listed. So before they go public, some of these companies need to raise funds so that they can grow their business, so that they can have a handsome listing. And that's the stage at which these private equity funds invest in them. These are a slightly higher risk than listed stocks, but they also provide a much better return than the listed stocks if they hit jackpot. The risk in these funds is some of the companies may not hit public at all or may be delayed in hitting public. As a result, investors need to have patience. So typically, private equity funds come with a cycle of five to eight years in terms of tenure so that investors need to have that kind of patience and time to reap the benefit therefrom. Similarly, you have another category within this category too, which is called the debt funds. Now, typically debt funds again pool money from investors, but instead of looking at equity, they invest into debt securities of unlisted companies. Isn't that a high risk? Yes, absolutely it's high risk, especially in unlisted unknown companies. But typically the fund manager's role here is to assess the risk and therefore he is able to play. The usual companies where these investments go to are in bonds and debentures raised by companies which are not yet listed. Typically these would be subsidiaries of blue chip companies or young and growing companies which have a great financial backing. Now, these companies may not have bank support at that point in time, given that they don't have a track record by themselves. But these funds find a great joy because they form within the circle or within the group of blue chips. Therefore, since they are a subsidiary of a blue chip or they are provided a letter of guarantee by their associate company, which is a blue chip, there is a tremendous amount of belief that these companies will be liquid and will provide returns. And because they are not listed in private, they can also give a very high return to the investor. So it fulfills all the buckets. Therefore, there is a popular debt fund as well in the category two investment scheme. Now, category three is in two categories. The two categories are PIPE, which is private investment in public equity. This is a very novel concept where the fund manager will pool investors' money and buy into an existing corporate's further issue. So instead of a listed company coming out with a rights issue, they will place it as a private placement with some of these funds. And these funds will then liquidate these holdings in the market after a period of time through a secondary sale. The idea is to give the money at one go to the company. Therefore, the company can use these funds to grow their business. From a company's point of view, it makes a lot of difference because they don't have to go through the cumbersome SEBI route of going with a rights issue and therefore a lot of formalities. This becomes a much easier route to collect a lump sum. So PIPE is another interesting route that many existing listed corporates use to raise money and this forms part of the category 3. Category 3 also is the route that hedge fund managers. Now by hedge managers, we look at people who go across different asset classes. So they invest in listed equity, they invest in overseas markets, they invest in debt, they invest in every asset class. They are very opportunistic fund managers whose only task is to generate the highest return possible. This class of funds are essentially suited for high net worth individuals and accredited investors who know what they are getting into. So these are the two investments that are permitted under category three investments. Like I mentioned earlier, AIF is a high risk, high return product. So SEBI mandates that the minimum investment threshold for a AIF is to be a crore of rupees. Now, typically the way to invest into this is to kind of go through the offer document in detail, understand all the details. Now, once that is done, the investor who agrees to participate in this signs document, which is called a commitment sheet. He gets into an agreement with the fund Typically, AIFs can be drawn either as a company, as a limited liability partnership or as a trust. Depending on that, the documentation gets signed. The investor agrees to a commitment value 
in excess of 1 crore in multiples thereof and thereafter the fund can call for his investments either in lump sum or in tranches of 25 lakhs, 20 lakhs depending on their need for deployment over a period of 12 to 18 months. So that's how this fund is structured. Now from a taxation perspective, category 1 and category 2 are given the tax status of what we call the pass-through vehicles. Pass-through vehicles means that while the execution of trades will be done by the fund manager within the fund, the tax liability for those executions will be in the hands of the investor. So typically at an individual investor level, he will need to kind of disclose those transactions and pay relevant tax for them. While category 3 is classified as within the fund, which means in category 3, either the hedge funds or the other funds, the transactions which are done within the fund are subject to taxation laws of the fund and whatever comes out of the fund is tax free, is not taxed in the hands of the investor. So that's the taxation rule for the alternate investment funds. What are the advantages of investing in alternate investment funds? First up, because they invest in different asset classes, they have the potential to deliver very, very high returns. As compared to traditional listed equities, the potential to deliver a much higher return, superior return, which is what attracts people to AIF investments. Having said that, with high returns also comes high risk. So these are very, very high risk investments, not for common investors. Second, they provide a distinct diversification opportunity. The class of investments that AIFs does is not the same as listed entities or mutual funds and so on. It's a completely different asset class. To that extent, it provides a great diversification opportunity for investors to invest in. Third, the investments that somebody does in these AIFs are not very volatile. In most cases, these are not listed companies. So there are no benchmarks. So therefore, an investor doesn't see volatility, does not feel the volatility in his portfolio on a regular basis. To that extent, they appear to be less volatile. The reason I use the word appear is because unless the investment is disinvested, one doesn't know what the valuations are and the valuations can keep changing quite often. So those are the advantages. The big disadvantage for me that I perceive in AIFs is that they are long-term investments. Typically, one needs to have a lock-in period by law of at least three to four years. Most AIFs have a tenure of seven to 10 years. Now, assuming you entered into this and later you decide that you didn't want to be part of it, it's very opaque. There's very little liquidity opportunity for you. You need to wait your turn. If you try and sell it earlier, you are bound to face deep discount to yourself. So it is not a very liquid product. It's not a very transparent product. It, it's not a very linear product in terms of return. Typically, I would think that one needs to have money that he can forget away for 10 years time before he can look at investing in AIF kind of investments. In conclusion, AIF can be a great diversification tool for investors, especially high net worth individuals who have a portfolio size of anywhere between 5 and 25 crores can find AIF as a good route to pursue. Having said that, it's a high risk and a high return. One needs to be aware of what they are investing into before they can commit their investments. This is certainly not an investment for the common man. Therefore, one who is risk averse needs to stay away from these investment products. We are in an early journey in AIFs in the country. We believe there's a long way to go before they mature and become accessible to a lot more parts of segments of the population. But having said that, this is also an interesting time where the returns are quite nice and quite good. So if you have the risk appetite, and if you have a portfolio where this alternate investment will be 10% of less of your overall portfolio, I'd say not a bad idea to take a look at it.